Um, I'm Janine Geske. My current title is Distinguished Professor of Law at Marquette University Law School, the Restorative Justice Initiative. Um, my history is I've been a lawyer over 30 years. <clears throat> I started out as a legal aid lawyer for a few years. Um, then I was a clinical professor at Marquette teaching trial practice. Um, I became a circuit court judge, which is a general jurisdiction judge in Wisconsin for 12 years. Nine of those years were in criminal court, and my last assignment is full-time homicides and sexual assaults. In 1993, I was appointed to the Wisconsin Supreme Court. In 1994, I was elected to a 10-year term. And in 1998, um, I left the court um, after my own spiritual journey, deciding that I was really called to do something else. And so I came back to Milwaukee. Um, this law school wanted me to come back, and I didn't want to go back because I didn't want to go to meetings and strategic planning and all those things, and they gave me a contract that's the best in the year in the world that I don't have to go to meetings. So I teach, and um, I've been teaching mediation, running a mediation clinic for the 10 years. Um, I was already starting to get involved in restorative justice as part of my pro bono work. Um, I ran a, a three-day intensive program in a maximum security prison with victims, community, and offenders. Um, and I did that for five years, um, and I took a little time off to run county government when we had a pension scandal, and then I was appointed interim dean at the law school for a year, and then after that I asked the dean whether I could start the restorative justice initiative. Um, and he's been fully supportive, and for five years we've been running a very successful program. After I went to the Supreme Court, and although I knew the work was very important, and, and I really thought I brought some experience to that court that was not there. For one, I was the only one from Milwaukee on the court. Um, so there were no, no one else that had sort of the Milwaukee, the big urban experience. But I also had spent so much time with victims groups and prisons, um, working with community groups. And so I thought I brought a different perspective, and I think I did. Um, I was profoundly unhappy going to work. And it wasn't that my colleagues, I'm still friends with them. And I couldn't really identify what it was, but I just, I, it wasn't, I just, it didn't mesh. And um, I spent a long time reflecting on that under spiritual direction. Um, I, you know, vacillated between leaving and staying. And finally, my spiritual advisor said, just journal for a year, just journal how you feel every day, and then take a silent retreat, which is what I did. Um, <clears throat> and I really went prayerfully through, you know, where was I, where did I find joy? Um, where was my passion? And it was working with the poor, working with people. Um, it was making a difference in people's lives. It was clinical. It's teaching. Um, and the, all the reasons to stay at the Supreme Court were money, prestige, retirement, health benefits, all those things. And all the reasons to do the other were because of what I, where I found joy in life. So it became an easy decision after I went through that process. Never regretted it. Um, when I decided to leave the court, I knew it was going to be big news because I left five, five more years on my term and I was relatively young. And so I, um, <clears throat> I contacted a, a reporter at our major newspaper that I knew quite well who did human interest stories and asked him if he'd write the story. And I, and I, I did it primarily so that the, um, it would not reflect negatively on the court for me leaving because everybody's was going to say, what's going on up there that she's quitting? And um, so I was able to tell my spiritual journey of going to the Dominican Republic and being with the poor and how I really learned how to value relationships and how that's where I found my joy. And, and so I wrote that there was this long article and um, in addition to not having negative publicity for the court, what happened was that um, I got 250 letters from people saying, thank you for talking about this. How did you make that decision? And to this day, it's 10 years later, I still have people, including elected officials, who come to me and say, you know, I'm struggling with this. How did you do that? Um, I got honorary degrees. I got all these things. The Supreme Court justices said, for quitting? You're getting all that for quitting? Um, but you know, it, it really turned out to be a very grace time and actually pushed me and compelled me um, to do more of the spiritual part. So I run spiritual retreats and, and do a lot of talking about spirituality and work. Um, and then when, when it's appropriate, I talk about my spirituality, my faith, and restorative justice. Um, so, you know, when I look back now in my life, um, it, it's really obvious to me why I spent all the time in the different places I did, because it all meshes under the restorative justice umbrella and, uh, you know, sort of my experiences and wisdom hopefully that I've gained through the years really come into play in terms of how I do my work now.
When I started the Restorative Justice Initiative, um, there were two major components and three objectives. The two components were a restorative justice course, a regular course, and then a clinical program for students. Um, the objectives were, one, obviously to teach students about restorative justice and practices, but it was more than that. It really was to try to um, help develop leadership in law students. Uh, we talk about lawyers being leaders, but we don't do much training in it. Um, I wanted them not only to know how the process is, but then to be out helping structure things for people so that they could create their own systems. Um, the second objective really was to be a resource to the community and, and whether it's research, whether it's films, whether it's you know talking or whatever, even helping facilitate things. And so we do that, we're sort of a resource, we get called in to all different kinds of places, everything from student discipline at the university to domestic violence to racial profiling to grinding the dancing problem at student dances, the unsportsmanlike behavior. So we've been all over the place and we're kind of a, um, a team that goes in and helps people sort of structure some kind of uh, dialogue on it. Um, the third piece was obviously sort of the academic scholarly and, and really, although we've done law review articles and things, um, our major accomplishment is a huge annual conference. We've got five of them. We get between three and four hundred people at every conference. They're primarily community people. Um, we've done, <clears throat> our first one really focused on, on victims and survivors of crime and why they believe in restorative justice. The second one, we did an international conference with um, a woman from Israel whose son was killed by a Palestinian sniper and a Palestinian whose brother was killed by an Israeli soldier who go out and talk together. Linda Beale came with one of the murderers of, of her daughter, Amy Beale. Um, and then Patrick McGee from Northern Ireland, um, who is, uh, was an IRA terrorist and who was responsible in large part for the Brighton bombing, and um, a woman who is the um, daughter of one of the people killed in that bombing. And so we had two of them by video conference, but we put on a conference just having people on opposite sides of, of, of international violence um, talking about restorative justice and its role. And then for two years in a row, because we've been involved in this issue, we've been doing with violence in the streets and safe streets. Um, and this fall, our conference is going to be on bullying in schools. And we've got public school involvement, we've got the superintendent of schools going to participate, we've got the mayor participate in the conference. And so that's sort of, we, we're really the community resource in terms of a conference and bringing together speakers that will talk about sort of systemic restorative work.